I'm just going to scale these ones down a little bit uh, in the X direction as well. And we should be good. Let's um, jump back into our orthographic view here. Select the background so Max has something to lock onto while I do my rotation. Let's see how we are. So we have our top sections here, our frames around the edges, our, our square pieces down the bottom, our frames down the bottom here, or our ledges I should say, the bottom of the column basically. Um, and we have our shelf through the middle just here. So we've added some depth to our um, piece of geometry. So instead of being a flat plane now, we've given it uh, a lot more depth. So when we um, when it starts to be lit in the Unreal Engine, we're going to get some nice lighting uh, as it as it's thrown across these columns. Because remember, our wall sconces, those um, where are these? These actually sit on that panel. So, uh, so when they throw light, they're going to throw light across the uh, the top, the the front of that panel, and having a bit more geometry on that panel will give uh, the light, make the light look more interesting, as it's uh, as it's spreading across the panel as opposed to just being a flat piece of geometry, which is the way it was in the original um, UDK fly through that you saw in my old version in 2011. So we've just added a bit more geometry to give it a bit more interest and uh, make the lighting look a bit more interesting as well. So now that we've done that, let's uh, start attaching these pieces together. So I'm up my base edit poly here, I'm calling it Wood Panel Deco. Uh, yeah. We'll get rid of the 15 at the end there. Now, again, I'm just going to start attaching these uh, pieces of geometry now. It makes no difference really what order you go in. Again, they're all using the same texture, so Max won't can ask you what you want to do with your texture map. And you see that um, if you hover over a piece that can't be uh, attached, that means it's already attached. You hover over a piece that hasn't been attached, you'll get your little crosshair back, like that. I think that's probably every piece now that we needed to attach. I can double check that by going into my layers here and having a look and see if there's anything uh, that is not hidden being listed. There are a couple here so that shows me that there are two objects on my model piece here that I haven't attached and they're just down the bottom here. So we'll just attach these two final pieces together. Check our layers here to make sure that nothing else is left apart from one object that's uh, unhidden. That's good, and that's that one there. So we know there now that everything is attached and uh, good to go. Another way just to double check is to select it and uh, move it. As long as everything moves together, you know you're good to go. pull out here. Alright, so we've um, added the uh, extra geometry to our panel PC to make it look a bit more interesting. I'm going to throw an ex a reset X form down. I, it's just a habit I get into when I'm starting to work with models between when I start doing exports into Unreal. I've noticed sometimes if you're taking a model from Max into Unreal using the FBX format, uh, the uh, scaling can be a bit incorrect and the way to fix that is just to throw down a reset X form and then just collapse your stack again. 
and now you'll know that when you do an export and bring it into Unreal, it'll be uh, correct. There won't be any problems. Or there shouldn't be anyway. Let's um, export our model piece here. go into our exports folder we're exporting it as an FBX and we're just going to call it uh, wooden panel deco now again I have a um, preset created called uh, painter UE4 which is the only, the only thing that's changed is I've, I make sure that smoothing groups is ticked triangulate is ticked and preserve edge orientation is ticked you could turn on Turbo smooth, smooth as well if you're using a Turbo Smooth on any parts of your geometry. We're not, so. And that's been exported. Now, I, I do want to use a normal map on this. So I'm just going to jump in and make sure I know what my uh, texture name is called. And it's uh, panelwoodnew.tga. Uh, now, I don't want to be working with TGA in Unreal. You can. There's no problem with it. Uh, I'm going to be working with PNG though. Uh, again, I, uh, you guys have watched me when I created the Garden Terrace. Uh, you know I work in Targa. I suggest you work in Targa if you're going to be swapping your assets with different people or different studios because Targa is a universal format and it's the one that they generally all use. Either Targa or TIP. TIP is still used quite a bit as well. Uh, it's a lossless format so you won't lose any colour information which is why I always suggest Targa. Um, I'm going to be working in PNG simply because I'm working with the Unreal Engine. PNG is still a lossless format, so there's no problem there. And um, you can even work in Photoshop's native format to bring your textures into Unreal because when you import your texture into Unreal, Unreal uh, does its compression on that texture before you make your game or whatever it is you're doing anyway. So it makes no difference what format Unreal you, you start with an, in Unreal because when it creates its game executable or whatever it is you're doing uh, it's going to convert and compress that texture anyway so. but we'll work with PNG just to keep everything consistent here uh, again I'm working with PNG because Substance Painter I've, I've set that up to use PNG and um, we'll just stick to what we've, what we've been using I think Models Art Deco building. Uh, now this is called. Starts with a P, doesn't it? I thought it started with a P. Just a second, let me check again what that name is. My memory. Uh, yeah, so I thought Panelwood New. Okay. Right there. I'm just going to convert this target to a, um, a PNG. And now I don't know if you guys were... Last week Twitch was having problems with streams going live. Uh, so I, I was talking then about uh, a plugin for Panel with New Year. <laughs> yep, thanks, thanks, no for okay. Yeah, it was Panel with New you're exactly right. Um, I was talking about a plugin for Photoshop. Uh, for PNG. Now I'm going to save this out using Photoshop's na native format here. Just PNG, but you see I have another plugin called Super PNG. I'm just going to talk about that briefly in just a second. I'm going to call it Panel Wood New Still PNG. We'll save it out. Now this plugin that I'm using, I'm just waiting for it to save, is called um, Super PNG. It's a free download, it's an open source plugin, you can use it for commercial purposes if you want. You can download it for Windows or Mac. It's, it's useful for anyone that uses Photoshop version CS3 or higher. So CS4, CS5, CS6, 2015, 2016, 2017, whatever version, back to CS3. You can install it into, um, into Photoshop. It's just a plugin that you put in your plugins folder in Photoshop. And what this allows you to do is I'll show you exactly what it does. If I use Max to save out a PNG from a render, which I've done, and I bring it into Photoshop, 
using nat uh, Photoshop's native PNG. Uh, let's just find where they are. Uh, finals, beauty renders, uh, V-Ray camera. So these are some renders I, I, I made in, using V-Ray. I'm just going to open one of them up. I saved them out as a PNG from Max. I open it up in Photoshop using Photoshop's built-in PNG format. You see my background has become transparent and I don't have an alpha channel. Now, um, by all means, you could go in and you could select the transparent areas to, to get a selection that way. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, that's why you have an alpha channel so you can easily select the part of the model you want. You can even select all and copy and you'll still only get the model, but it can be really handy to have an alpha channel. And as you can see, if you import a PNG from, and that does, not just a PNG from Max, from any, anywhere, Photoshop's, <clears throat> pardon me, Photoshop's built in PNG won't give you an alpha channel. So let's do that again, but let's uh, use the new one. So I, I've installed that plugin into Photoshop, downloaded it. Like I said, it's free. Let's grab this one here. Now, in order to use the new one, all you do is you select a file, you hold down the shift key, and then you hit the open button. And it will give you an option now with this new plugin asking you, do you want uh, to make the alpha transparent, which is what you see here? Or do you want the alpha to appear as a, uh, a separate channel, which is what I want to do? So if I hit OK now, you see I have my black background, but if I go into channels, I have an alpha channel. And that's very useful, like I said, to be able to have an alpha channel in a PNG. Uh, a lot of people, I've been, I've looked at the forums on Epic's website and a lot of people complain that when they import their PNGs, they can't use an alpha channel. And that's because they're using uh, Photoshop's built-in PNG. If you download this plugin, this free plugin and install it, then you can get an alpha channel and use PNG. It is very handy. It's a, just a, and you can have both of them at the same time. You don't have to give up Photoshop's native PNG to use this new PNG. You have them both installed at the same time. You can just work with whichever one you want at whatever, whatever time you want to use it. But uh, yeah, do go to uh, this website. I'll pop it into chat. If you do want to download the um, Super PNG plugin, like I said, it's completely free. You can get it from that link right there um, and just install it into your plugins folder, it's just like any other plugin for Photoshop. And it's available for Mac as well. So if you're a Mac user, you can use, uh, you can download it too. Very handy, very useful. Um, it's free, like I said, hey, if it's free and even if you don't think you're going to use it, you might as well grab it and uh, have it there installed just in case you do. Okay, so let, that's enough Photoshop stuff. Let me just uh, close these down. So we've saved out our PNG version of our texture. I'm just going to check this, the image size to make sure that it's a power of two. Because remember with um, any game asset, it has to be in a power of two. You can't have like a, a 98 by 132, uh, 98 by 131 texture. It has to be a power of two texture. It doesn't have to be square, but it must be in a power of two. And this one's okay by 2048 by 1024. So that'll that'll work fine for us. So let's jump into uh, Nulled. Let's um, load up our color map. And that's, and the other reason I like PNG is you can see it actually in your um, in your explorer there. Target you can't see in Windows. Let's pull in our actual mesh. Uh, again, this is one of the reasons I really like using uh, Nald, K-N-A-L-D, because I can load up the mesh that the um, texture is going to be assigned to. Now that that funky yellow is just to do with the um, the HDR map that Nald is using. That shine, that yellowy shine is, is in, in the panorama, which you can change. River, river is probably better for what we want. I don't want a yellow uh, look to be thrown over the model. 
So we have our model in here. Now we can play with our normal map uh, to get it just right before we uh, save it out to bring it into Unreal. So just let me angle it so I can see my light hitting the model a bit better there. And again, you can move your light um, in the program as well just by holding down your right mouse button and moving it around. Your left mouse button rotates. And again, remember guys, if, it, if you're using uh, Y up to go into your preferences for your exported model here and make sure that Y up is selected. So let's, let's look at our uh, normal map here. I'm going to pull back on the extra large detail, pull back on the um, large detail, pull it up just a little bit. Remember we go with like a stair step here. It's probably the best way to go. And you can see this this medium detail is affecting the uh, middle of the model here more than anything. So I'm going to pull back on that a bit. I don't want I don't want to go too high. I don't want to go nuts with this. Uh, same here. This, again, this a fine detail is affecting more of the um, middle of the texture map here. Again, don't go too high. If you go too high on your normal map, it's going to look like it's covered in plastic when you take it into your game engine. So remember, like with anything, less is more, guys. So just, just, I know it can be tempting to go really high on these things, but don't do it. Because if you, if you do that, you get, like I said, when you bring this into Unreal or Unity or whatever you're using, whatever game engine, not just a game engine, it can happen with rendering as well. It's going to look like the, um, the model piece has been covered in like uh, plastic wrap. So pull it back. And now we'll look at the extra fine detail and the same sort of thing. Don't go too high. And then the intensity in nulled, as you can see here, you can see what it's doing. Um, again, we don't want to go too high on this. So I'm going to pull it up until I just start to see a bit of highlight happening here on that middle piece. So not too high where it's all highlighted like that, but just keep pulling it back until you get just a bit of a highlight happening. Like that. All right. Because remember, we added geometry to this um, panel, so we don't need to fake it so much with our normal map. We're using our normal map more to get this um, fake detail through here. That uh, you know, decorative swirl through here and through the middle. All right, so let's update our integrator. And that's going to create our uh, height map uh, and our ambient occlusion map. Now I'm going to play with my ambient occlusion a little bit because I want to use this in the Unreal Engine when I create my material. I'm just going to pull it up so it's a little darker. I'm just going to play with my um, rays here as well and see if I can get a different look to it. No, we'll go back to our general ambient occlusion, turn off our uh, rays. Just going to pull it in just a little bit. And we're going to be using the ambient occlusion in, in, in the Unreal Material Editor, just to uh, add, give a bit more interest to the, um, to the texture. Uh, we're not going to be using our concavity or convexity maps. Now, I'm going to say about my convexity map, because this can be very useful to use as a um, either a roughness or a metallic in Unreal. I don't know whether we're going to use it, but we'll save it out just in case we do want it. We're not going to use our transmission because it's black anyway, uh, or our curvature. So we're going to be saving out our height map, our normal map, our ambient occlusion map, and our convexity map. So let's make sure we uh, set our path. Exports. I'm going to create a new folder. Um, call it 
wooden panel deco. Oh. So we'll save our files into that so that uh, we know where they are. I'm going to go into my exports here and make sure I have my height map, my normal map, my ambient occlusion map, and my convexity. So I want that as well. Selected. A PNG is the format I'm using. We've set our path. So let's just do an export. Okay, that should be good for what we need now for um for Nald. So let's just close that down. Let's jump into Unreal. Uh, I'm in my models building here. I'm going to import that um, wooden deco panel. Wooden panel deco. I'll get it the right way around. Uh, now, this is the other thing we were talking about the other week. Um, remember I was saying, if you don't have your object in max at 0, 0, 0 position world space, when you bring it into Unreal, the axis is going to be in zero zero, but your model piece is going to be over here. So your axes will be here, but your model will be here. Now there is an option in there is no no option in Max to change that. There is an option in Unreal when you import your model to change your axes so Unreal doesn't put it at zero 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 if your model is not at zero 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 in uh, in the three D program you're using. And that uh, that option is here make that a bit wider it's called trans transform vertex to absolute now normally by default that is, that option there is checked you want to uncheck that if your object is not at zero 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 world space in whatever 3d program you're using make sure that option is unchecked when you import it into our unreal so if i go import because remember my model piece is not at zero 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 yeah, that's fine. Uh, my model piece is not at zero, zero, zero. Now I'm just trying to work out what it's done here. I'm going to look at that uh, texture, uh, the material it created. Hey, Alchemist, good to see you. Now that looks like a, a, a normal thing to me, so just before I look at whether the normals on that are correct or not, and I'm, I'm assuming they're not by that, I'm going to set this texture up. So I'm going to control C, control V to make a couple of copies of um, this texture sample slot. Uh, I'm going to go into my, my textures folder, into my building. Hey Smurfberry Barbecue, good to see you too. Thanks for popping in guys and saying hello. It's always nice to chat to you and chat and see you in chat. Now I'm just looking for the texture that it's imported here. Uh, it hasn't actually moved it. When I did the import on the model, it put it in uh, everything in our models directory. So I'm just going to move that into our textures folder because remember, Keep everything nice and organized in Unreal and it'll make your life a lot easier when you're working on stuff. So I'm going to move that texture into building textures. And I'm going to move the uh, material into building and materials. Okay, let's jump down to our textures. So panel wood new. Uh, Let's import the normal map and the ambient occlusion map. So this one and this one. Let's uh, change this one to the normal map. Let's change this one to the uh, ambient occlusion map. Let's uh, pump our normal map into our normal slot here. 
and our ambient occlusion into ambient occlusion. Make sure we save our material. I'm just going to close that down and jump back up, uh, jump back to our actual model piece here. Now again, it looks to me like um, the problem here is the uh, the normals and the one the pieces we created are correct. The panel in the background is incorrect. That's easy to fix. We'll jump back into Max. We're going to select our object. I'll try doing a normals modifier first. Unifying my normals, we'll see how we go with that. Again, I'm going to uh, export that model piece again. Wooden panel deco is the one we want. Okay. Let's jump back into Unreal and re import that model piece. Still doesn't look like it's done it, so let's uh, jump back into Max again. I'll do a flip normals, we'll try that, but uh, I may just have to select the back panel to do it first though. Okay, back into Unreal. Oh, not nailed. Let's re-import it again. And it did do a flip on it, but it flipped the ones I didn't want flipped. So what we're going to have to do is uh, turn all flip normals here. I'm just going to collapse my stack. Uh, I created the texture uh, go for Xenon, yes. I did not uh, do a high to low poly. I actually did a paint in Photoshop to make the texture. So basically what I did was I took uh, photographs of different parts of wooden panels. They're all from, they're not, they were never together like this. And I put them together and changed the color to make sure that they all blended correctly. Uh, and I did that in Photoshop by painting it in, by, yeah, painting it together in Photoshop. That's how I made the texture. But no, there was never a high poly version of the model. You could create a high poly version quite easily by using displacement in Max um, and taking that into ZBrush to soften it up a bit if you wanted to, if you did want to make a high poly to low poly of all this detail happening here. But um, it's probably not necessary. A normal map will work just as well for what we want because remember it's a wall panel so we're only going to be seeing it side on most of the time anyway, or from the front. And a normal map will work okay, but that's why I did want to create the geometry for the um, for these borders to give it some actual geometry and not just have it a flat plane like it used to be. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go into object mode. We have our back panel selected now. Thank you. I'm glad you like the texture. It'll work well for our deco interior building. These wall panels go along the uh, the entryway and the main um, upstairs uh, room, I guess you'd call it. I'm not sure, really sure what room room it is. Uh, that they'll work quite quite well, particularly when we get the light on it and the light starts playing across these geometry pieces. So we have our, our object selected there. I'm just going to um, flip my normal. We have our object selected, let's do another export. Make sure export selected, because remember we're in isolation mode here and if you don't go export selected in Max, it's going to try and export everything and we've got the, all of our assets uh, in our file at the moment. Okay. Let's jump back into Unreal again. Let's re-import the model. What is 
going on. It's looking a little dark for some reason. I'm trying to work out why. I never was one for forgiveness. Still got a problem, so back to Max. Back to our object mode. I'm going to flip them back. I can tell when I flip them this way, they go dark, which is indicating that the normals are facing in. I'm looking, it's flipped incorrectly. So when I flip it this way, you see it, it goes lighter, and that means it's flipped the correct way, facing out. There seems to be a problem with the normals though, so... Where am I? I generally use the modifier for my normals, but there isn't a normal in here. Just gotta remember where it is. Flip, edit. I think what I'll do is throw my normals down now that we have that sub-object selected. Again, we don't want to flip the normals, we do want to unify the normals. Uh, we're going to collapse all. Let's try it again. Now I'm actually going to change one of my options when I do an export here as well. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to turn off triangulate. Because Unreal will triangulate the mesh automatically anyway. Still got a bit of a problem. I've got to work out why it's doing that. Why, why, why? Uh, let me check my textures actually. What's it using here? It's using the target texture. I'm going to actually load in the PNG texture. No, it didn't make a difference. All right. I thought it may have been something to do with the alpha map that was causing that darkening. Very odd. The normals are facing the, the correct way. Tangents are looking okay. Fine normals are looking okay. Back to Max. We have to work out why that uh, panel is coming in incorrect. I could actually remove the complete back piece here because, um, again, that's always going to be against the wall, but I'll leave it there for the moment. I'm going to throw down another reset X form on this. And then collapse my stack again. Again, we're going to look at our normals. Um, I don't want to flip them. I do want to unify them. And again, I'm going to do a collapse. I'm actually going to change my texture here to the PNG version. Uh, otherwise, Unreal may uh, change it back when I do a re-import again. 
back to the Targa. Let's export it again. Internal preserve edge orientation. I'll turn triangulate back on. I'm actually going to turn off smoothing groups as well. I may come back and turn tangents and binormals on, but we'll see. Yeah, that, that's not necessary. It's a turned edge. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just warning me I have a turned edge in the uh, mesh. No, it still doesn't look like it's fixed that problem. Alright, let's try one more time. If I can't uh, get this to work, then I will come back tomorrow and we will look at it then. I'll do some research on it uh, tonight. Okay, turn smoothing groups back on, preserve edge orientation on. I'm going to actually turn on tangents and binormals. No, that hasn't made a difference. I may have to leave this for now, guys, um, and come back to it tomorrow and work out what is going on here with this uh, panel in the background. As you can see, the actual pieces of geometry we created are correct. The panel itself, though, for some reason, is showing up much darker than it should be. And usually, that in th that's usually uh, a normals problem, so I'll have to look at that. We will leave it there for today yet though guys, um, I'll be back on again <clears throat> tomorrow at 5pm Pacific time in the US. I do want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and for watching the stream. Um, remember, if you're not sure when I'm going live, I always post 15 minutes <clears throat> to my Twitter page at PhilDoes3D before I go live. Uh, yeah, like I said, thank you guys for, for hanging out with me and for watching. Uh, thank you for the follow. See you later, Smurfberry and um, Alchemist and Gozenon and Sniper Echo. I'll be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Um, I'll look at what's causing that problem between now and then, and uh, we'll look at it tomorrow. Like I said, thank you guys for watching and for hanging out with me. Um, I'll be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Uh, I'll see you guys later. See you guys.